What is going on guys and welcome back. So in this video, not working on this Tahoe, but I am working on this Tahoe. So another Tahoe, one year older, basically the same vehicle, but uh, they've been having an issue where uh, I believe they go to swipe the key and it says theft to turn and the car won't start. Uh, so usually this is related to the pass lock system and this particular vehicle needs an ignition switch, which that's typically what that problem is going to be. So we're going to go ahead and get the ignition switch changed and we're going to take out the uh, remote start that's in here because they don't use it and they want it out of here and it may have had some role with uh, the issue not uh, with the you know thing not starting. So we're going to go ahead and fix that up for them. But uh, yeah, other than that, we're going to get to it. I'll show you guys what we're looking at down there in the knee bolster area. It's already took it off. It's just two seven mils. Two seven millimeters, one right here and one right here. And then I pop this top section off. You just kind of grab it by the corner here, give it a pull, and then you can pop it off all the way around and it gives you enough room to get that lower area out. Now I want to get this part of the column off right here. It looks like we're tapped into a bunch of different wires there. So we're going to be cutting all that out and getting all this stuff out of here. You can see we have extra modules in here and fuses. So we're going to get rid of all this stuff, all these butt connectors as well. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and work on that right now. So these are four tens for this guy, so I'm gonna go get that out. So you can see we got quite the mess here. Um, I went ahead and yanked out all these wires, all these modules. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff in here. Um, you know, for everything from, uh, there's a Viper alarm in here, but this is some kind of uh, relay satellite thing, which has all these, you know, all the big ignition and power wires going to this, which, uh, I don't know, I guess sends power and ignition to everything else. And then here's your remote start system, which is a Viper 160 XV. It's probably a pretty old system in this car. Um, and then you got this guy, which I'm pretty sure this guy's got something to do with the pass lock. Um, and then this one too. Uh, I remember I took the uh, remote start out of my truck and there was similar modules in there uh, for the GM pass lock. But you can see right here, these are wires that probably were going to the pass lock module. Um, we have these butt connectors and you got a yellow wire coming out of here and a yellow wire coming from down here. So these guys right here, basically, uh, we're going to have to cut these butt connectors off and I'm going to solder a wire between here and here and we will cut that out. And this black wire looks like it's just been tapped in, but I'm going to go ahead and pull this apart just so we can be sure that all the wires are all set and so we can change out our switch. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. So you just want to take this guy and yank that out he'll come right out and then there's some screws in the bottom and then this guy should pop off from the front and it's got like some hanger clips on the back and uh, you'll see once I get it off there so yeah there were supposed to be two screws in here here and here they weren't there a lot of these alarm installs can be shady obviously this person tried to tap with the black wire and they tapped the wrong one so they taped it up and tapped the other one um, this is why I always install my remote starts myself even though it's not always possible, there's programming involved and stuff. I just don't trust anybody else working on my vehicle because, you know, they do stuff like that. If I do it, it's different. I know it's there, but I don't want somebody else hacking it up. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and cut this because that's all that they did here is they tapped in. So we can uh, cut this. I'll tape that up and I'm going to cut this here and this other one here. And then we will strip this back and strip this back and reconnect these wires. So this is actually the uh, reference voltage that the vehicle looks for. So when you swipe the key, there's tumblers inside of the actual lock cylinder. And those tumblers equate to a certain voltage. And your key gives it a certain voltage that it looks for. And it needs to see that specific voltage. And that wire right there is basically what you do is you learn the voltage that it wants. And you program that to uh, whichever module here is responsible for it and this guy knows the voltage that it looks for. So when you go to remote start, it sends that voltage from here through to your system and your car understands that voltage as being the correct key and then it starts your vehicle. Uh, but you have all sorts of things in place so people can't steal, like the brake switch, it'll turn off if the key isn't in the ignition, all that other stuff. But basically this guy, we're gonna reconnect him so that everything works like factory. And uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and strip this back, reconnect all that stuff, and uh, then we'll put in his new ignition switch which I have right over here and there's a certain way to time this switch which I will show you guys once I get it all apart and get it out and then I'll show you guys what we got to do 
So I got her all hooked back up, found the yellow wire with a similar gauge and same uh, composition. It, all the other wires I kept finding were like the, this alloy, but this one's a nice copper wire. So I want the uh, resistance to be really good on this line. That way, or really good as in like, you know, no change in resistance. That's why I'm soldering, making sure it's absolutely perfect. I don't want any issues. Um, that's why I always like to solder all my connections. I think that you're way less likely to have a voltage drop over a, a known good soldered connection than you are uh, with like, you know, butt connectors or T-taps. All kinds of places use these T-taps here. Basically what it does is it's got a little blade and it cuts the wire and then you're just plugging into it, which is uh, all fine and good, but you really do cut the wire. And I think that it weakens the integrity of the wire itself. And I don't really like to use T-taps. Uh, I'd much rather uh, solder like I'm doing right now. All you need is just enough for it to soak in and we'll let that cool a little bit. And then uh, I have some shrink wrap that I want to put over it. Make sure it's good and cool. And then we'll put our shrink wrap over it. So we're all cleaned up, and uh, yeah, it's looking good, looking like a solid repair. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, take that out of there. And oh, it looks like they have another yellow wire here that they tapped into, and it must not have been the right one, so they crimped it. I'm just gonna make sure that that's in there good. Yeah, it's in the crimp good. I'm not gonna mess with it. It should be okay. That's not the actual pass lock wire. That was just a wire that they did on, uh, by accident. And there's also this orange wire here that's tapped into, and that one feels pretty solid too. So, okay, I'm just going to leave those where they're at, and uh, yeah, we should be good here, otherwise everything is looking good. So now we're ready to change out this switch. So you can see we got our switch right here. So what I'm going to try to do is go ahead and unplug this guy, um, and that'll lead us to our next step. So I got him out. you got to push down on that tab there. Once you get it out, Okay, we'll let it hang down over here. So we have to get this uh, ignition switch out of here. So what we're going to do, uh, we got to move this guy that holds the wire. You can get rid of him because we got a new, got a new one on the new switch. But what we have to do to make sure that we are timed correctly on this, because you, you got different modes, right? So hopefully you can see this switch here. But uh, on this new ignition switch, we've got all these gears. And so uh, in this position where you have the widest gap here, this is uh, all the way in the off position. But if you throw it in in this position, you can be off. And that's kind of the issue here. You don't want to be off because you could be messing with it for a while. So uh, it, you'll feel, you understand how the, the stock ignition switch works. Uh, I have it unplugged so it won't start. But if we go to one click, this is accessory mode. Uh, this is key on. And this is the run here. So all the way run is where we want to be so what we are trying to do is line these two up so like I was saying if you put it all the way in the off position like this is off this is off and you put it in I get that beeping to stop but if you do that you could be a tooth off because it's a, it, there's a little bit of variability in this beginning tooth here so you could mess it up but the best way to make sure you don't mess it up here is like we uh, unplug this switch here so the car won't start and you're gonna take it go all the way to accessory, to key on, and then to run, and then let go, and then leave it like that while you're pulling it out. And then what you wanna do on this is go one click, two clicks to uh, key on, and then another one, you'll feel it with the spring in there as a detent spring, and it'll wanna go and come back. And then so you go and you let it come back, and then you leave it there, and that's where it sits. So now when we shoot this guy in the hole, 
we should be all set and not have any problems here. So we have to uh, take this guy out. I believe there's this uh, tab on the side. We'll push him out. This white tab on the side. So we push him in. The switch should come out. There's another tab on the other side. And uh, let's work it back and forth here until we get it out. Okay. So now we have our switches out. Our wire comes out of the way. And we have him sitting. We're going to go ahead and put in our new switch. We'll shoot him in the hole. And he locked in nice and good. We'll put our wire tuck back up in here. And then we're all set now. We can go ahead and plug this back in. And the key is now on. We can see that that's correct. We go one back. We're now an accessory, only the battery lights on. And then we'll turn it off. And the car does go off and pull the key out. So now we'll try to uh, start the vehicle and make sure that it starts. And it does, so our, all of our wire connections are good and the car likes the uh, voltage for everything and it likes the new ignition switch. So that's very good. Turn it once, now we're in, uh, you know, now we're in accessory mode and now we're in off and the car turns off. So we know we timed the switch correctly so now we can go ahead and put everything back together and that's pretty much it guys it's really not that bad not too difficult um you know just basic getting to stuff and uh i just cut out a factory you know or not a factory but cut out an aftermarket alarm and uh so i may do a little bit to zip tie some wires up here and tape a few things just to clean up their mess but overall successful install now it's just the reassembly so just as easy as uh putting it in so that's about it for this video guys hopefully it won't be too long for you but that's uh that's in a nutshell how to change the ignition switch and how to make sure you get it timed correctly um so that you you know have your key working so if you guys had that problem then this is uh the fix for that so there you go if you enjoyed subscribe and uh watch some more of my videos if you don't mind um some of them are repair videos and some of them are about my car but hopefully you guys enjoy the content nonetheless thanks for watching peace